Good evening, everybody. So Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's November the 21st, 2023, regular meeting of council. I call to order. Two, the result of the agenda for the November 21st, 2023, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, second by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Councillor Boychuk will not be present tonight as Councillor Dickens Memorial will be attending by uh, Zoom and we also have with us tonight uh, as a guest uh, Dominga Campana, Campama, um, potentially our next student uh, counselor. <clears throat> Can I move to a comfortable chair and say she's going to be staying here? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Three. Result of the minutes of the November the seventh, two thousand twenty-three regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Four, four point one. Resolved that this regular meeting of council be suspended, and the council of the town of Swanover do hereby sit as board of revision to hear appeals on the assessment roll uh, assessment roll for the year two thousand and twenty four. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. All in favor? Carried. I declare the. Board, uh, the board open to continue deliberations against the 2024 property assessment. Applicants and assessors have been have provided their evidence to the board. It is the board's duty and responsibility to confirm or amend the 2024 assessment based on evidence provided for role. In this case, role number 114900, Civic Address 1000 Main Street. The owners appealing the liability to taxation, amount of assessment value, assessed value, and the classification of the property. Councillor Medwood. I have at least one, maybe more questions. In the resolution here, it says, and further be resolved that the 2024 assessment with respect to rule number 114900 be confirmed. What exactly does confirmed mean? So we, so we haven't got there yet, but um, that if, if it was passed, it would mean it would be stay what it has been declared as by the assessment branch. Because my question basically is, as I reviewed the data provided, and I kind of lean towards agreeing that it doesn't fit the criteria of being subjected to school tax. And if I'm, I know the municipal, munis sorry, I know on a municipal level we have no authority on that, but that's why I'm asking what the confirmed mean. Does the confirmed mean say that we are agreeing that it should be subjected to school tax and everything else within that assessment? And in which case would I vote in opposition because I don't agree with it being subjected to school tax? Like, I'm, that's what I'm looking for clarification on. Fair enough. So in, in the assessment package from the branch, or even if you just open up the, the property taxes, the property tax bill attachment, uh, <clears throat> under municipal taxes, uh, those are the, the service taxes that we have, the special service levies, those cannot be altered, so they'll be on the property. If you look under general municipal, that's where uh, the assessment of 585,000, which is 65% of the land in the building assessment, which comes to 8,969, that's the portion that council can amend right now. That is, that's the extent of your jurisdiction. Under the school division, which Mr. Neufeld has said that he would like to uh, go to the municipal board for, that's the portion that the province has the jurisdiction on the school division property taxes. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? Um, well, it might. So basically, regardless of which way we vote tonight in favor or opposition of the resolution, 
that's not going to change what's sitting under the general municipal so the, so the board is not to just deny it. If you don't confirm it, you have to tell the owner what it's going to be. And you have to tell the assessment grant what it's going to be. And you're going to have to, or I, I would assume council would want to justify that amendment. So if you confirm it, it stays what the assessment branch says it should be according in their professional opinion. If you amend it, I guess we, it, we you have the power to amend it, but I would assume that you would want justification for we, it. We haven't got to the resolution, so it's a debating the resolution. Um, uh, just before I go to Deputy Mayor Morio, um, we, we were asked, I believe the board had asked for some further information from the, um, the applicant and then had come forward in time for this meeting. Um, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, no, I, you just asked the question if that other information was received before the meeting, which it appears it doesn't, so I'm ready for the resolution. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm going to go right now because there has been no information that was provided. So then with that, uh, resolved that the appeal with respects to the 2024 assessment rule number 114900 in the town of Swan River be received and further be resolved that the 2024 assessment with respect to uh, roll number 114900 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? I just want to clarify since we're now officially discussing the resolution. Fair enough. <laughs> so we have no say or authority on whether or not a property is exempt from school tax. Okay, so we're really just looking at all other points within the document. Only the it. general, I have to bring up that bill. The service levies, they will be on the property re regardless. It's the general municipal at large. An assessment of 585,720 at the mill rate of 15,313. Taxes only eight thousand nine hundred sixty nine thirteen. That's the portion that council is able to amend. Right. Okay. Deputy Mayor Morio. Sorry, the board of revision. Uh, yes. So, in the absence of any uh, uh, additional information that was requested by Mr. Newfeld or the applicant to provide us to come to a, a decision here tonight, um, and then based on the information that's been provided to the board. Um, I see that we have no choice but to confirm uh, the amount that's been provided by the assessment branch. Uh, Councillor Powell, then CFO Ganita. I guess just inquiring, is this something that happens quite often or? No. I've, I've been here 14 years, I've never seen the board amend. Okay. Assessment. CFO Ganita. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to clarify, uh, Council cannot make a property exempt from general municipal taxes until the assessment branch has first made it exempt from school taxes. So right. once the, if the assessment branch decides it's exempt from school taxes, then council can pass a resolution to also exempt it from general municipal taxes. That cannot be done now. That comes later if it, if it so happens that the province decides to make it exempt from school taxes. Correct. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Uh, CAO pool, please. Just as secretary, I think you should know that they did send a package, but I did not have time to prepare it for the board. They sent it really late. They've had months to, to give us the information. I got it less than two hours ago, so I did not have time to prepare it and put it on the agenda. And we have rules about uh, information coming before council too, so or the end the board. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried and approved. Resolved that the board of revision hearing now be adjourned and the regular cut meeting of council uh, resume. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. Already going down to 7.1.
resolved that the RCMP Municipal Policing Service invoice package for the period of July the 1st, 2023 and the September 30th, 2023 be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood or seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a couple questions. Um, in the uh, contract policing multi-year plan document on the first page, under the O and M section, it references crops equipment, and there's a forecasted increase of basically four times what that budget line was in 2022-23. So in 22-23, it says that one came to 109.648, and the 23-24 forecast is 466,304 dollars. Is there? a reason for a significant jump in that particular line item and is that potentially related to the body worn cameras i don't know if anybody here can answer that question we can definitely um, document that and ask uh, the uh, the staff sergeant um, what that means yeah, because that's yeah. Uh, going up four times what it was the previous year. Okay. So we'll find out the information on that. Um, anything further? Uh, no, I believe that's all I had for that one. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the request for contribution from Manitoba Crime Stoppers be received. Moved by Councillor uh, White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Bobbitt. What is a contribution? Well, it, I, it's not clear, I don't think. It's, it's an asking for a contribution. 25 cents per head. So this is something that we'll receive this, and, and I guess if that's something that Council wants to contribute to, then we'll talk about that at budget time. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, result of the letter from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities dated November the 14th, 2023 regarding canoe rebate be received. Moved by Council Bobbick. Seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion. So you see here, this is the trading company through AMM that when we make those purchases and savings, uh, there's also rebates we get back. And this year, we'll receive uh, over $9,700 from uh, from the trading company. <coughs> Councillor White. I'm all in favor of, of the canoe and trying to save money for the taxpayers, but. It's a catch-22 for me because we have a community of local business people who, by buying through Canoe, we're not supporting the local guys. So I struggle with that. I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, I struggle with that because uh, I appreciate us saving money, which we should for our taxpayers, but I appreciate helping the local businesses, which we should be doing also. We have several local local businesses that are signed up with Canoe that we supply from. So that's the way we would go yes. if we were going to buy through Canoe, it would be something just for local? We, no, we, we well, we don't, we don't have to, but we, we do. Okay, so there are other things we buy from Canoe that those local businesses aren't signed up with Canoe and don't get uh, the opportunity? Uh, it's tough to say. Price comes in to mind. Like for a street sign, we we go straight directly through the AM and the canoe suppliers. Well, you know the feeling of council, regardless, the local yeah. little cat. Yes. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> it's carried. <coughs> Eight point one. Resolved that the director of public works uh, report be received. He did not have a report. Oh right. I thought there was one there. He did uh, send us apologies. a discussion paper earlier in the week, or last week, but our decision paper, I guess. Okay, we'll skip that. Uh, 8.2, uh, result of the October of the 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Land Report be received. 
Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I noticed for October we had uh, eight cancellations, four due to change of mind and four due to appointments canceled. I'm wondering if we can also inquire when people are canceling if it has anything to do with the price we are currently charging for the service. That just stems from uh, the services to seniors board were out meeting with uh, Westside Lodge and Heritage Manor and a number of the seniors indicated that the price is too costly with all the inflation. So I'm just wondering if we can maybe, are we out of line to ask that question? I'm just thinking it would be good feedback for us to know how to manage the handy band. We can ask the handyman drivers and the clerical staff to ask that question. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> it's carried. Council reports. I'll start tonight with uh, Councilor Bobby. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, attended a call meeting last week. Yeah, lots of good discussion there. Uh, last Thursday, uh, we went to a growth committee meeting at the watershed, which is a uh, watershed offers uh, incentive payments to uh, farmers, landowners for keeping bush riparian areas, uh, wetland stuff. So with that, this is a 10 year program that uh, landowners can sign up for if they meet the priority, the board decides the priority. Right as of now, we're protecting 2,500 acres. This is the second year in operation. This is going to be a 10 year program. We're probably averaging 1,400 to 1,500 acres a year that we protect. Uh, we've, uh, and there'll be probably this year close to 63 to $65,000. We're we'll going back into the local economy here for the farmers. So it's a really good program that's offered, and uh, there's lots of work the staff there has to they bring it to the board. Uh, there's lots of drone and lots of we assess everyone. Uh, then they have to keep track of it every year. So over 10 years, you can imagine the work that is going to entail with this. So uh, it's actually they've done a lot of work and excellent work. Uh, and I will be attending a regular meeting on Thursday night with the board meeting of Watershed there. So I just want to speak a little bit on the landfill. We've indicated that. Uh, stuff can be removed from there if somebody has a need for it if they go through the contract right there. Am I correct with that? Yeah. So under that, but am I under the impression that the metal pile there is actually the contractor's? I would say it is through a contract that it's his asset. Yeah, it's so I, I guess the, I, I do believe the contractor is very fair and uh, lenient with that and if somebody needs a wheel off, I'm going to use a wheel off a lawnmower there is no problem at all. There is some people that are abusing that and it needs to be dealt with. I'll talk to CEO Poole a little later. Probably I haven't met with the contractor, but I'd like to talk with the CAO Poole a little bit about that. But just to make certain that people aren't, I don't want to bring this in that people will not try to use the stuff that's there, but to, to clarify it for the contractor. And um, that's about it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just, just a question relative to the counselor. Hi. When you say protect, how do you define that? What do you protect it from? Okay, I'll use there's a quarter with uh, some bush on it. Yeah. So they will not knock the bush down. It will stay protected. As in that. There's grassland is very high priority. Tall grass keeps uh, lots of birds, insects, stuff like that. They'll protect you. The priorities change and the board gets to change the priority. Like if you had. Uh, if your whole quarter was bush or something, you probably wouldn't get paid as much as an acre of where there's a bush that protects a waterway. So, and some of the areas that are protected in the farmlands are wetlands that are out there. They'll get paid for them. But if they can, they can farm through them at no cost to them. They don't lose their incentive. So it's a lot of these wetlands are like funnels for your aqueduct, which needs to be fueled every once in a while. So if you level everything and put it in a ditch, 
it would not get into your aqueduct. So it's very important that we have these funnels. So they can pay to protect a swamp, for example, but in a dry year, they can run their, their equipment through there and put a crop in it? Yep. So it's, it's more like, but when you say swamp, I would say more like wetlands out in the field. So instead of with the GPSs and with all the leveling devices, it's pretty easy just to flatten that field. So this is something that instead of doing that, and there is lots, believe me, there's lots of farmers that are practicing this. They are leaving those wet spots. Oh, cool. so it's, it's, That's good. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Medwood. Uh, well, November 8th was the Swan Valley Communities That Care meeting. So we have our Swan Valley Toys for You drive. The Fire Hall one, which is in conjunction with the RCMP, is uh, November 25th. I think it is an afternoon one. And uh, I believe we're at Red Apple on November... Uh, oh, that might have happened already. Yes, I think it was this past Saturday. Sorry, folks. <laughs> um, but I believe Red Apple is still accepting uh, gifts and drop-offs uh, around town. So we have that drive going on right now. November 14th and 17th, uh, services to seniors. We went out to the Heritage Manor and the West Side Lodge just to meet with the residents and see if there's anything more that services to seniors can be doing for them. We had some feedback with regards to the price of handy van uh, costs. Uh, we asked, uh, there sounds like there might be some interest in if the handy van operated as a shuttle service. So uh, the services to seniors had a board meeting today. We will be presenting uh, administration and council with a letter requesting costing uh, for the potential of maybe renting the handy van for certain periods of time to be able to provide, uh, collaborate on providing a shuttle service to the seniors once or twice a week. Um, I also had a meeting with some of my services to senior board members with Director Clausen last week and that is to collaborate on the Town of Swan River is started the milestone process with age-friendly Manitoba but there's more steps and levels we need to be working on and completing. So we met with Director Clausen about uh, collaborating with services to seniors boards and seeing if we can get some of those levels accomplished because if we want to promote our town and valley as a retirement destination, I think we do need to be looking at achieving those milestones because they also help us with, uh, it puts you a step up a little higher in being able to receive some of that grant funding that Age Friendly Manitoba gives out. So the higher, more levels you achieve, the more access you have to grants and funding for um, programming and whatnot. So we had a great brainstorm. Unfortunately, I think it's a little too late in the game to meet the uh, application deadline for a potential of $10,000 for this coming year, so we're going to continue to meet and get our ducks in a row so that we can be ready for the next uh, round of applications and maximize on that. Um, services to Seniors Board will also be sending a letter <laughs> to Town and Council because a lot of the residents also brought up concerns with winter coming up. Uh, in fact, uh, after the West Side Lodge, sidewalks were perfectly clear leaving and then a couple of our members wiped out on the road as they were getting to their vehicles because people from outside the lodge had also come by. So they had addressed some concerns with regards to snow removal. So I think that letter may also help us with regards to um, our advocating with Manitoba Highways. Uh, about their snow removal on Main Street because it does include some of the issues and the concern and the challenges they have when Manitoba Highways is clearing that. So that might actually help us with our uh, negotiations with them. 
Um, other than that, uh, I had a COPP meeting. I'll be training a new member this Friday. We are looking to collaborate with the town and the Star and Times on doing a little bit of a, for lack of creativity on my part, I'm calling it a windshield blitz. Um, the information I provided and shared with council at the Cal meeting, uh, RCMP is looking on getting us some printed, both for the home security, the business security, as well as the little vehicle uh, safety protection. <coughs> And once that's available, a few of our COPP members are going to do a bit of a blitz over the few weeks and go out and just kind of put that information under the windshield wipers of vehicles parked in along Main Street, business streets, and maybe hit up a few of the business parking lots with, of course, the business owner's permission uh, and kind of be out and present in our vests and whatnot as we do that. And other than that, AMM's next week. Yay. Okay, thank you. Council White. Uh, November 8th, we had our medical services team, and I, I take uh, a lot of pleasure in saying that all G4, as usual, were related. We had three Reeves and the mayor and uh, Deputy Mayor Morio and, and a handful of others uh, working collaboratively as for the Valley. Uh, one of the primary discussions was in return of services for nurses, health care aides, etc. Uh, the CT scan and the mayor took the phone me today, which I appreciate. Thank you, sir. And we're told that, to help me if I'm correct here, December 4, construction begins in the office so where they're going to build a room where they put the CT scan with hopefully spring of 2040, 24, with it up and operating. So that, that's all good news. One thing the, the, the committee feels we're failing on is our, our communication in schools and other communities and First Nations and partnerships with other universities, University of Manitoba, UCN, and, and our team is working together very, very well. So that's becoming a priority for the team. Uh, Cal, we all went to the Cal, uh, and I was uh, pleased with the discussion taking place with Recycle and our local community groups. I'm assuming you've had opportunity to talk to some of those guys who are concerned. It's just appropriate. And I uh, had a phone call yesterday. I initiated a phone call from Mayor Boziak. I listened to his uh, report on CBC Radio and the con concerns they have uh, in Dauphin relative to crime and they are implementing their closed circuit TV and already some of the stuff they have on their TV they've shared with the RCMP which led to the arrest of some individuals. So I asked uh, Mayor Boziak if he'd be uh, open to meeting with our Protective Service Committee and or our council, he says both, whatever's best for you guys, he's a pretty easy guy to get along with. And uh, CEO Poole suggests that uh, rather than drive down, for example, which we could do, is meet with them at AMN. So I'm hoping uh, Mayor uh, Jacobson and Mayor Boziak will find the time when we can, and he's all, all for that. I'm assuming our council, we could sit in an evening somewhere and go for dinner and talk about issues we have in common. The one we were specializing was crime. So uh, I'm pretty happy talking uh, with uh, Mayor Boziak. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Powell. Okay, um, so we had a couple library meetings um, and we have a few things going on there for Christmas for sure. Um, we have the Festival of Trees that hopefully we can get everybody involved in and I think it's kind of being advertised a little bit more. Um, just want to send a thank you to the, I guess to this um, board, I guess to people who have really put a lot of time and effort into making sure that things are, you know, rolling along there okay. So. Um, we had a transportation meeting last last couple weeks a couple weeks ago. Um, we also have a Swan Valley interagency meeting coming up next week. Community foundations had their dinner last weekend and it was a great success. Um, there was many people there and, and I think um, everybody's really happy with the way things went. Um, um, last week last week uh, met with Dan Mazer, um, spent some time with him and. He, stopped, he was in Swan River and had some great conversation regarding Swan River. Uh, some of the issues discussed were like the CT scanner. Crime was one of his big things for being here in Swan River. Um, but he also did have some stuff to talk about with the GIS unit in, in Swan River. And just the only other thing was a reminder that Swan Valley St. Peter's along with the Muscosippi First Nation will be holding uh, the second annual Hockey is for Everyone game tomorrow night at the Centennial Arena. 
Um, the extended ceremony will be start at, I would say about 10 to, 10 to 7 tomorrow night. So, mm -hmm. yeah. about it. Councillor, or sorry, Deputy Mayor Morio. <clears throat> Uh, just a few things that most of you have been touched on already was the eighth uh, was the uh, lengthy discussions we had at the medical services committee that uh, Councillor White has already reported on, and then uh, on the 14th our committee of the whole, and then a lot of background work on the establishment of the fire board uh, getting going along with some uh, uh, work for the medical services committee. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, for myself, <clears throat> uh, Swan, Swan Valley School Division hosted their strategic planning session uh, last Tuesday, and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, the uh, you know obviously they talk about the successes and the challenges that they have moving forward in the next five or ten years, but just to hear some of the issues that the school division is dealing with on a regular basis within the schools is 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 something else. You know, one of the things I took away or one of the things is the issues of children not ready for school when they come to school and, and try to get them engaged because, you know, either they're sleep deprived or whatever it might be and they're not ready for learning uh, is, a, is a big issue. Obviously finding uh, school teachers and, 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 and personnel that are, you know, directly related to uh, education is, is a big issue for them. But the board is working as hard as they can and, and they did host a really good a uh, session there during the day and, and we're looking forward to seeing the results of their strategic planning. Uh, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation uh, last night um, we uh, had a good meeting um, we have approved uh, from the board uh, the spending of uh, purchasing uh, some recliners in the palliative uh, care unit which is uh, very important obviously but uh, making people feel comfortable either their patients or, or family members. Uh, so I can tell you right now that the uh, community so far for the CT scan fundraising uh, from the community has raised right now uh, a little over $108,000. So we have reached our, our goals. doesn't mean we stop at our goal. Uh, we continue on because we still have more um, funds coming in and have been dedicated to that fund. So that's a good thing. And thanks to all the volunteers and the people that have contributed to that uh, that fun. Uh, Council White had mentioned that he spoke with Mayor Boziak from Dauphin and I had spoke with Mayor Boziak on Saturday evening actually and we talked about this and we had some plans of um, meeting uh, or talking I should say uh, by phone this week as he was actually under the weather a little bit so I left him uh, be and uh, so I'll hopefully we'll have some chats to chat about the some of the crime stuff. But I did speak with the, the mayor from uh, the PAW yesterday, the lengthy discussion, and very similar to the issues that we have here. And, and um, we'll share some of those in some of our crime strategic uh, discussions. But um, when we hear people say that this is not happening in other communities, and people saying that they're witnessing these things are not happening in other communities because of the actions of councils and all that, that's absolutely, it's not true at all. And so it is happening, other councils are doing what they can, but it's, it's a really difficult uh, thing for communities to, to deal with. And we know that, being at the front of it, but, and then also our business owners and, and, and residents as well. And we're doing whatever we can in our capacity to, to deal with this and, and work together with our towns and, and cities uh, around us. And we will continue to uh, lobby uh, the provincial government and federal government on whatever we can to, to, I guess you could say, make these issues go away. But, but anyway, these are some big uh, discussions and, and I uh, have plans to meet with both of the mayors at the AMM next uh, next week. Um, and also with uh, Chief Janai, him and I were talking on the phone a, a little bit this week too. And uh, we, we want to get together, just our schedules just don't uh, quite uh, go together yet, but uh, we definitely will at some point in time. Um, last night, uh, also RISE uh, had their meeting, which was um, a good meeting because we are actually 
working on some initiatives uh, to uh, attract either business or people to the Swan Valley and how we can promote and uh, if it's encouraging developers outside the valley to build or to uh, set up their shop here so we're actually working on a quite uh, extensive um, uh, brochure I guess we can say that will reach out and give some testimonials to people that live in the valley that have come here and you know with us living here we 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 see what we see every day but we don't hear the testimonials of people that do come here and absolutely love it and this is why they moved here some people have moved here to the valley as an example in Birch River some people have moved here from Chile you know, so there are people are moving here from all over the place, and it's not always bad. We'll work on the bad stuff, but we do also have a lot of good stuff, too. And we have to keep uh, remembering uh, stuff like that. Other than that, for me, that's that's it. Council White. Thank you for, for your sharing, uh, Your Worship. Uh, a meeting or two ago, we talked about the possibility of putting some news release out to various media about what we have done and are going to do, what our plans are relative to crime. I wonder where that ended up. Uh, right now, I guess we don't have anything that we haven't said before, but we're waiting for our December 6th community of practice meeting. If I can say anything that I'm waiting for something, it would be the, the CSWB one-on-one -on -one meeting December 6th. Can you elaborate on that December 6th meeting? Uh, it, it's just the the program from the province in order to set up a, for lack of a better term, strategic plan to fight crime for our community. It's really to get the information at the grassroots level, literally on the ground, and send it to the province so that they know where to spend their, their grant dollars in the future. So that starts December 6th. And that will occur where? It's whatever? Uh, yes. Open to the public? No. No. That, and this is something that's been ongoing for some time, Councillor. Mm -hmm. So if there's a, more information that we can help or, or, you know, provide. But I think that some of that stuff is still kind of like in the grassroots of, of the process. And we just uh, have to let that go. But if there's any more information, Mr. Poole probably can provide that with you as well. So. I guess I, I can draft a higher level, like the CS. CSWB program can be one. The, the meetings with the ministers we've had over the past 24 months, we can compile what we've done sort of a higher level. See, I think we've done a lot of things in the last six months that may not have been shared with the public yet. So you know, I appreciate your comment. We're yeah. communicating all the time. But there's a lot of good stuff that's happened, and I think it's privy. It's important for our, our communities to know that some think that we're standing still, and, and I, I don't think a lot of I don't listen to a lot of stuff I read there, but I think it's imperative that we share that we're, we're moving forward, we haven't stopped, and here's the good things we've done. Can't do enough of that, personally. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, CL Pool, do you have anything? Uh, no, I, I have a written report for council. I can take any questions. Uh, thanks, for everyone, for giving me the conflict of interest forms. We will send those in. You've given, given them to me on time. The AMM, I won't be able to, to be traveling with the group, so I, I don't know if council wants to schedule like me to tell you who's going to the MTCC and what time you're leaving, or do you guys want to schedule that? We can do that. We can figure that out. <clears throat> That's so then on your, uh, on your report, does council have any questions on the report? As you can see, no. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, there's there's been some research into the accommodation tax, and uh, and can, we will give council a draft on on how we're looking at dealing with these short term rentals. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you. So then we'll move on to nine nine point one. I got a question, Your Worship. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Poole, on your report for uh, the bottom items for council attention, where you got Deputy Mayor and Councillor White signature for Municipal Development Board land sale, um, I'm drawing a blank on that unless you got some information for me. Yeah, it's it's just the 
the land sale document that our lawyers required uh, all of the board to sign. So as soon as you get back, I need your signature and we're good to go. Okay. Good? Yep. Okay. 9.1. Resolve the Town of Swan River sign an agreement with Manitoba Transportation Infrastructure with the Town of Swan River is responsible for removing snow from Main Street and 4th Avenue North. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion. Now I know that we're all going to be talking and say, hey, you know what, are we not going to be like trying to get more out of this? My answer would be yes, but go ahead. Uh, well, that's part of it. And in my personal opinion, I'm thinking we do not accept the contract. We, uh, Director Harvey had provided us with a, is it decision paper, discussion paper, um, with some information in it uh, regarding their timelines and whatnot. Personally, I think we, if they're not uh, clearing it in a efficient enough manner, then we give the green light to go ahead and do it and send them an invoice for it. So then they actually see what it is that we're spending on it and maybe we get paid for it, maybe we don't, but chances are, I don't think the $14,000 is making a significant difference. Okay, uh, Councillor Deputy Memorial and then CAO Pool. Uh, yeah, so uh, I looked at that as much as it pains me to uh, even consider um, this contract for MTI. Um, I have been on council before when uh, we didn't have these contracts and uh, street cleaning on Main Street and 4th uh, was done by uh, MTI and those piles sat on Main Street and were removed at their leisure. Um, so for as much as I would like and still advocate and still push MTI and the new minister at AMM if we meet them and even up with a letter um, to increase that amount, um, to me it's a disservice for us not to um, eat up that extra cost um, to keep that uh, business section uh, open for not only for the residents and the business people but for the safety of, of the motorists and that. Um, going forward okay go ahead just for council's information we we have informed them that we would send them an invoice for the actual costs we've given them the actual costs of what it takes when they do give us money and when they don't give us money they they have no right or no legal we have no action to make them pay and they they state to us that they will not pay so uh i guess that's just the information that i have we've we have given that to them before and they just come state. Yeah. yeah, and I do understand that. I guess looking at the seasons that have gone 21, 22, we received $13,699 and our cost was 51920 22, 23, we received $14,110, but our cost was only $37,050. I'm wondering what is the how do they justify what they cost? Like, how did what? What's the formula that we had less snow but got more money than the two seasons? So, uh, what I would like to see, I don't have a problem with the amount if I knew a formula. Do they pay fifty percent? Do they pay twenty percent? Do they? Because it's based 60? on that average snowfall. No, you, well, we can. There is an option that we can sign an agreement for the the equivalent. Uh, precipitation factor. The the issue is is we we get that measured in Cowan, not Swan River, but either way. Uh, so that is an option. We can go back. So we did opt uh, for the basket fund um, to answer to answer. I can't answer in details when they decide to send what where. But we, we, what we're given and what they answer all the time is explained in the decision paper that uh, they do have the levels one, two, and three. And if, if there's small amounts of snow accumulation, they will be stuck cleaning those level two and three areas where, where they just will not have the resources to, to clean off that major 
Windrow down down Main Street. I know that was their number one issue, but uh, or, or or to clean the parking lines. Council back one. Uh, just a comment is I'm not sure where those timelines are with regards to what Councillor Bobick was referring to, but 2023 is not officially over yet, so there's potentially more to be added to that. So it might look low right now, but we haven't made it to the end of December yet, to which might increase that 2023 number, depending on. My, my thoughts a little bit on this, if I can. <clears throat> With the, the province and MTI agreeing to pay us, it makes me think that they do agree that it's important to have Main Street cleaned. It's up to us to lobby and to make them understand that they should be paying what the actual cost is. Go ahead. Yeah, and just to answer one more question, the, 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 the agreement that we signed is a basket fund. So that's why if we decide not to clean it ourselves, our expenses will be low, and they are going to pay us. The, the agreement is they pay us for that. How much service we provide to our taxpayers is completely up to us. Right. So this is a basket fund. They will pay us for the work we do, how much work we do. Uh, we've proven that we're going over what they're giving us. Councilor Bobbitt. Well, again, I go back to, I, I, I would like to see it. the basket fund. I guess that's just, they just decide what they're going to pay. Basically, there's no measurements, there's no nothing, there's no time frame on equipment. I do understand that Thomas Swan River does pull the trigger when we decide to clean snow, and maybe we do a really great job of doing it, and maybe we overdo it. I do understand that they shouldn't pay the whole thing, but at the same time, there is no formula here for how we get to where we are. So that's what I'm. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Medford. Um, well, this goes to a comment that Councillor Bobbick made in our transportation meeting, but I tend to agree with him. But if we sign into a contract, uh, I tend to agree that we have less bargaining power once we'd agree to service for that amount versus if we don't go into the contract and send them invoices. And maybe they only pay the invoices up to the 14000 or whatever they offered in the contract and then we're on our own. But either way, we're still potentially getting that $14,000 or whatever it is they're willing to offer us and maybe we get more. So I, I kind of agree. Like last year we went with a contract and we didn't get anything more and we didn't get very far with our advocating, so. We have a new government. Um, Councilor Bobbitt. Are we meeting with? Uh... We have, that's the attempt, yes. Okay. I would suggest this stays till after AMM. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, 9.2. Whereas the Town of Swan River Recreation Department used, uh, used funds of $17,842.80 from the Recreation Reserve Fund. To purchase or replace the non-functioning natural gas hot water tank from Swan, the PAW, refrigeration and air conditioning, and whereas, recommend, where, and whereas recommended equipment for optimal operation needs is important to ensure the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Center is functioning properly for patrons use. Therefore, it may resolve that $17,842.80 funds from the Recreation Reserve be used to purchase the be used to purchase the required second natural gas hot water tank for the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Center. Moved by Councillor Medwood. Seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a couple questions. So in the decision paper it references that a non-functioning hot water tank replaced the initial non-functioning hot water tank and I also happen to notice that um, item line 30941 in our um, accounts uh, payable there references a hot water tank for wellness center at $4,552.80. Is this the same non-functioning water tank and if so is there not a warranty 
on that hot water tank? Uh, you can so answer that. So it was that. last year. Um, they've been without this second water tank since last year, and and you're correct. They had two, and one broke down, and then the second one was breaking down, and they tried to use the parts from the first broke down one to fix the second broke down one, which was successful, but still left them with one. So I don't think there was any warranty left on it because of the purchase date. Um, and I guess I'd have to look at the purchase date, to be honest. I didn't bring that with me. But the cost of it went up that much. We were shocked when we got the quotes. Okay, for the discussion, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, you're muted. I guess from what I understand, there's supposed to be two hot water tanks. Uh, one's been uh, non-functional, and the second one was cannibalized to make one functional. Um, years past, we created the recreation reserve um, to deal with this exact issue is to play, replace these uh, items at the uh, wellness center or the arena. Um, I know it's not the first hot water tank that we replaced there. We replaced the other ones at the electrics for the, the rest of the building. This is for the pool and the hot water um, hot tub. So whether we dip into our reserve now to uh, get that replaced so that that hot water tank is there when the other one breaks down or we wait till next year and next year's budget, it's here regardless. So I and it agrees that uh, we proceed with uh, this resolution and replace the hot water tank from the reserve. Kind of part of uh, the cost of operation. CFO Ganita and then Councillor Bollock. I'm sorry, I don't understand the resolution. It says, whereas funds were used from the recreation reserve, therefore take, use funds from the recreation reserve. Plans are to take the $17,842.80 from the Recreation Reserve Fund. Yeah, the first sentence says that funds were taken from the Recreation Reserve, $17,000. And the last sentence says, therefore, resolved to take funds from the Recreation Reserve. I am going to edit this and then we will. Okay. So we're just going to edit that uh, because maybe when I was reading it, something was going on in my head. Um, Councilor Medwood. Is there going to be a warranty with this new purchase, especially at that price point, and how long will that warranty be for? I don't have that information, but um, we work with this company quite a bit. They're very good to us, so I can definitely look into that. Okay. I would assume so, yes. If I can, um, while we're getting that read done, can we actually look into if they have like extended warranties that are available? Sure. Yeah. I know that can be costly, but we it might be a often. good idea just to kind of look at that. Yeah, I can look at that for sure. Uh, Councilor Bobbitt. Yeah, and again, we've replaced this other one. We looked into replacing it before, and I guess the question at that time: Were we going to use the same brand because we because of the warranty issues and stuff like that? So maybe the reason this cost has gone up is because the brand has changed and there's a different scenario to the whole thing, which is why would we greatly appreciate if I could get that information and to base a decision on it. It's $13,000 different for, it looks like the same tank, but if it's a different brand, better warranty, lasts longer, I don't have a problem with that. Based on that then, do Council we want it? Table. Sorry. Council Medlin. Based on that then, do we want to table this until our next meeting to obtain some of that information? I don't think it needs to be taken. I think the, the purchase has been made already, so it's it's not been made. No, it's not been made. <clears throat> but it's something that's needed, but I think some of those questions can be answered after the fact. Go ahead. What good's answering after the fact? I guess, like, you put the tenders out, right? Uh, we've got quotes for them. Um, it's been like this for a year. I would say what's another month to look into some of this information for council or i would say what if the water tank that we have working right now fails 
So I, I don't know. We can do. It's two weeks, actually. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you like. Okay. So uh, we have the uh, resolution updated here. You need to approve by the immediate second. I got a question here before you get to that. Okay. Worship. Go ahead. So. The other hot water tank that's in question for 3000 something that's seen later in the agenda under expenditure, that's a hot water tank that's been purchased and paid for or being paid for since it's in our financial check x-ray um, versus uh, as Director Clausen just said that we haven't ordered this one. So that's two different tanks. Our, so is, is one just a basic commercial hot water tank for the building and this is a, an industrial type hot water tank for the hot tub at the pool because I can't see why we already, uh, had administration cut a check um, for a hot water tank already um, for that wine cost and we have not um, put an order in for this one so we got to be that's two separate tanks Sorry, it's Do we have any we response to that? Get to the answer. I think that I'll be forever trying to find what he's reading. I think we may have tried to repair this during the shutdown. It was kind of before my time, so I'm not quite sure for sure. But more information I can I can get. But I think if I recall, they did try making some repairs to it, and they were not successful. And that's what's led into the quotes of the new water tank. It's just, it's just taken us that long. Oh, okay. thank you. Councilor Bobbitt. Yeah, and again, like oh, that's October 29th, so that's probably Memorial said. I, I wouldn't have a problem with this as if it's a totally separate tank. But again, to help our rec director out, that we have to explain to the ratepayers what this is. And it, it right now, to me, if I'm a ratepayer, I'm looking at it. You bought one for 4500 now you're buying one for 17000 So I would like to know why you're spending that kind of money. So in an explanation to that is like Deputy Mayor Morio said, if this is a totally different hot water tank, which eats a large volume of pool, I can see where the price is. But until we get that explanation, I would like to table this motion. So are you making a motion to table? Yep. Okay. So then um, uh, the, uh, do we have a seconder to table the motion? I second it. Okay. All in favor? So it's tabled to our next uh, meeting. That'll give you guys enough time, right? Okay. I have one question if I'm allowed. Uh, we're done on that discussion until the next meeting. It's just to clarify maybe for our director, possibly. Okay. If she's also looking into extended warranties and therefore we potentially are, because when this comes back in two weeks, it's the exact same resolution we look at. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Unless the price expires between then and now. Right. We have to uh, recall. Because that was going to be my next question because she's just looking into extended warranties. But it can be amended as well. Before, or that's something we have to do at the time when it gets At that ready. time, we can also do an amendment if she has something different to add. Okay. Or if the price, like you said, has expired at that time. Okay, I just wanted to clarify how that works in two yeah. weeks. Okay. If you worship, I got some more information here. Uh, see if Oganita just pulled up the invoice, and it's uh, repairs to the North Hop water tank. So it's an attempted repair to a, a faulty tank. And the majority of that uh, 490 is parts, and then 3500 is in labor and that. So that's repairs and parts to an existing tank. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, so we'll move on. Uh, we'll have more discussion about that at our next meeting. Um, so we'll move on to 11, 11.1. Resolve the accounts as follows be here by proof of payment. General accounts checks number 30926 to number 30955, totaling $88,156.57 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5383 to number 5387, totaling $101,543.06 as listed on Schedule B. 
direct deposit payments totaling $34,884.25 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Okay, 30929 and 30930. Amazon purchases. We're still seeing them. Yeah, I haven't given the managers a policy to not go on Amazon. I, I've been looking at, looking at efficiencies, like where the managers in our meetings were going to start discussing purchasing efficiencies, what we can do buying in bulk, because then you know maybe our price drops locally. But there is no, you know, according to your procurement policy, we, we go by best price and their, their budgets. Uh, well, we go by best price up to Best value 000. is the word. Just let, let uh, our CEO will finish. But uh, in the end, they are using their budget as, as the driver. And, and I, I haven't given them the directive to not use Amazon yet. No, okay. I haven't. So we are looking at trying to get efficiencies. Uh, what we can do is most likely they'll be asked to start bringing the comparison so council can see what types of differences we're talking about. <clears throat> Councillor Medwood. The procurement policy actually speaks to best value and you're not going to get a better value when you consider that our local businesses not only contribute to the tax base in this community. Point of order, your worship. Go ahead. Uh, we're debating the, the uh, check register, not the procurement policy. You're out of order. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Moving on to 11.2, whereas sub subsections 306 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on November the 14th, 2023 be made to the 2023 property tax roll for the resulting reduction of $924.98. Moved by Councillor Bobbe, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, all in favor, it's carried. 11.3 Resolve that uh, the following unpaid utility accounts be added to the corresponding property tax rolls and notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amount being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amount in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective July the 1st, 2023. Utility account number 1065 zero zero one zero decimal one nine ninety four dollars and sixty eight cents for tax uh, roll number two four eight two zero zero decimal triple zero one one six two four zeros decimal one three sixty one dollars and seventy one cents tax roll number zero zero one seven eight zero zero decimal triple zero one one nine one four zeros decimal zero one three hundred and twenty seven dollars and six cents tax roll number zero zero seven seven five zero zero decimal triple zero one two zero nine triple zero one decimal one one sixty one dollars and seventy one cents uh, tax roll zero one three zero four hundred decimal triple zero three zero zero one zero zero six zero decimal one two seven hundred and seventy dollars and twenty seven cents tax roll zero three two two four hundred decimal triple zero three two six four four zeros decimal zero two sixty one dollars and seventy one cents tax roll zero two three one five hundred decimal triple zero totaling one thousand three hundred and seventy seven dollars and fourteen cents moved by Councilor Medwood seconded by Councilor Powell Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you for not letting me have to read that again. <laughs> uh, 11.4. Result of the financial statements for the 10 months ending October the 31st, 2023, be adopted as received. 
Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Um, this is a question that might be best answered by CFO Ganita. But when I review the statement, I am seeing multiple single line items indicating that they're exceeding 100%. We're not quite to the end of the year yet, so I'm wondering if there are any overall red flags for, because uh, I, overall departments that are breaching the, uh, exceeding their budget or anything we should be concerned about. Councillor, or sorry, uh, CFO Ganita, I don't know if you have a specific uh, uh, item or not, but go ahead, CFO Ganita. Now, each uh, department head looks after his or her own budget, so I guess if they're over in one area, then hopefully they'll be under in another area so that, that overall they're not over. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? carried. Okay, where are we here? 12, 12.1. Result of the bylaw number 10, 2023 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish the fire board to read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Um, when I'm reviewing the uh, change document as well as the red line document, it looks as though we have removed the one and only section that related to cars being parked on Main Street during snow removal. Remember order, Your Worship? Yeah, you're, you're in the wrong. We're talking about the fire board. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Okay. I thought we were on the <clears throat> parking bylaw. Then um, I have no not, comment. Not, not quite yet. <laughs> Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 12.2. Resolved the bylaw number 10, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish the fire board be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Go ahead. Does this mean that all Expenses related to fire now go to the board and we won't see them on our financial statements anymore? Uh, no, there, there will be a one-line expense that we contribute to the board. Well, yeah, but yeah. other than that, we won't see the individual. Yeah. And that'll be in 2023 or four. Council can request that from the board, the detailed expenditures. Deputy Mayor Morio. Yeah, you'll see um, invoices coming through the town to pay on behalf of the fire board, but at the end there will be an accounting uh, on the remaining budget uh, finance, uh, funding to the f uh, fire board where there'll be an accounting to um, take into account those expenses that have been paid by the town on the board's behalf until the board is fully operational with its own um, administration bank account who, invoice payment capabilities. Okay, further discussion? Go ahead. Yes, um, this may or may not be directly related, but I think it is somewhat related in my opinion. Uh, where are we at with the hiring of a fire chief for the new fire board and knowing how that's going to impact our uh, staffing here? That has to do with the fire board now, not with the council here. So. The fire, new fire board is actually working on that. Okay, and so we're preparing it at a Cal meeting, and it, because it's with personnel, it will have to be in camp. That's right. Yeah, okay. Okay, for the discussion, it's a recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. It's unanimous. Twelve point three, resolved of the bylaw number eight, two thousand and twenty-three, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to regulate parking and traffic control, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion. There you go. Now I'm in the right spot. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so my concern is that in the report change list, we're removing the section which was, to my knowledge, the only existing section in the parking bylaw with regards to controlling parking on certain streets for snow removal. Meanwhile, our parking survey had multiple comments and results saying they are in favor of the town enforcing more parking bylaws to get the streets cleared properly. So I'm not sure I'm comfortable with passing this as it is with no acknowledgement or enforcement of right. so it, that. The reason it was taken out, like we've always had the idea of it's if it's not enforced or if we are not doing anything about it, we remove it from the rules. That's the reason why it's out. Uh, we don't enforce it, we just don't, because it's between three and six and we don't have the resources to. So the, uh, it was removed. We can always keep it in. We can, we can, we've talked several times, I know with the, with the Director of Public Works on how a towing system would work, where we would we go, who, like how much that's going to cost, but we haven't, like obviously not ready for this bylaw. If we, you know, we can spend the time to do that, but we, the bylaw just doesn't get passed and our, our new regulations get passed whenever that idea is decided, how we're going to deal with the uh, parking and snow removal. I guess the, the advice is, like, we took it out because it's just not enforced. That's it. So, if we can, we can, we can leave it in, it's up to council. Deputy Mayor Morial, that council met with. Um, in regards to section 18, um, like between the three hours of three o'clock in the morning and six, it, that's not even reflective of the hours that uh, public works crews are actually out there um, removing snow and stuff like that. So I think it's best that it is removed until an appropriate uh, section can be drafted and inserted in this policy through by bringing the bylaw back for for review, but on, until this time, um, I agree with the uh, administration that it should be removed because it, it's not enforceable, or we're not enforcing it due to manpower and that, um, and it's not reflective of the actual hours that are actually um, being conducted by our snow removal crews uh, performing the work. Okay, uh, Councilor Edward. Couple points. One, it's my. It was my understanding. It's been communicated before that our bylaw officer doesn't actually have to be the one enforcing it. If public works are out on the streets and they're the ones that see the vehicles, they can simply do a snapshot or write down a license plate number and communicate that to the bylaw officer who can then issue a ticket after the fact when he's in during business hours. So. That being said, to me, it's not a case of it can't be enforced, and it because apparently it can be enforced. It's just the public works people that need to take a snapshot or whatever. Based on the comments we got from our parking sur parking bylaw survey, I don't think we're doing the bylaw service if we're not addressing all of those concerns. Because to me, that's telling the citizens that we're not really listening to them. We're just pushing through our own agenda and serving our own agenda without actually, so we put it up for first reading, we got the feedback, but we haven't really taken the time to factor that feedback into and have council discuss how to address all of that feedback. So pushing it through for a second and third reading tonight to me it just says we're not really listening to the citizens and giving it appropriate consideration before we push through the next two readings. Uh, Fire Chief. Uh, just to comment on the taking a picture and setting it into the bylaw officer, uh, sometimes that plays havoc with our timelines for notification and our screening process. Uh, which is why it's more efficient on our side, the administration side, to place a handwritten ticket on the window for instant notification, rather than wait for Canada Post that could be seven to ten days of delivery in a two-week notification period. Okay. 
further discussion? Yeah, and, and I guess it, the, the main point of that is, it, is the highway. So we're talking about 4th Street North and Main Street, and as Deputy Mayor Moria said, this is, you know, we, we don't really, we, when we're doing it, we are, we're doing it within regular hours. We're cleaning up those parking, parking streets, so it's not, it's not really effective. That's the, it's the only answer I've, I've got to, uh, or I guess the additional information is, is it's speaking about a highway, so we're not talking about Ninth Avenue North with that clause, it's a highway. <clears throat> When we're responsible for it, we contract it out to Cook Brothers who are actually operating during those potential hours. Because that's when they clear Main Street is after midnight. So if anything, amending that time frame from being midnight to 6 a.m. so that it serves our contractor better for when they're out there and we're not plowing around vehicles, especially on Main Street or... No, I get the reasons why. Well, like, well, like I say, we, we look at... We're looking at options of what can be done, including towing and then the, the cons of that, including cost and where the vehicle goes and liability and insurance and... Uh, there's really no easy answer that we have right now that we're ready to implement without... Uh, a full presentation to council, so yes, we are we are trying to pass this. If council wants to bring it bring it back in several months, we we can do that. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to ask the question. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Twelve point four. Resolve that bylaw number eight, two thousand and twenty-three, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to regulate parking and traffic control, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion. Councillor Medwood. Same as before. I think we're rushing this without due consideration to the feedback from the <coughs> citizens. For the discussion. This is a recorded vote. <coughs> All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving right down to members' privilege. I'm just going to remind everybody, I didn't do it in, in, in your time of councillors' uh, uh, reports, but um, some of your uh, comments in councillors' reports are items that should be in members' privilege. So I'll remind you the next time I'll call you out on that. Nobody else does. So I'll start with members' privilege with Councillor Medwood. Uh, yes, I had a question brought forward to me. We apparently received thirty thousand dollars for advertising from Stewardship Manitoba that's supposed to go towards advertising information, whatnot for recycling. I'm just wondering if that is accurate, and if so, have we been spending our thirty thousand dollars towards? educational information and or advertising for recycling, such as what can be recycled, where it can be recycled, how to properly recycle so it's not ending up in the landfill because it's considered contaminated. From where, sorry? Uh, Stewardship Manitoba. Apparently they give the town a $30,000 grant for advertising. I think I know the answer to that, but I'm going to let CFO Benita go. We don't actually get any money. Um, the, the newspapers uh, a number of years ago uh, pulled out of the recycling formula. Like, uh, businesses pay money to Stewardship Manitoba, and then Stewardship Manitoba gives money to municipalities for recycling the newspapers. Uh, said that just did not agree to that. And so after many years, several years of negotiating back and forth, the newspapers agreed to have uh, 
advertising credit for ad advertising space. So yes, apparently every municipality has credits built up, but and we're supposed to be getting a statement of how many credits we have built up, but I've never seen any statement. So I don't know where where the town sits at with the credits. Um, but uh, the it was encouraged, I guess, for municipalities maybe to work together. So the G4 municipalities have together been doing big ads in the newspapers uh, promoting recycling. That's exactly what, not exactly that far, but I, I knew it had something to do with that, that lieu of that credit through, through the newspapers. But we can look a little bit more into it, because this has come up once before. I'm actually on that provincial committee too, so I do have I a contact ask. name or a number that I was provided with uh, <clears throat> that you can probably use to follow up. Okay. Anything further? Um, I think that was about it. Okay. Councilor White, thank you. And just uh, the discussion, uh, I don't even know what's appropriate anymore, but the concerns about purchasing from Amazon does concern me as, as a taxpayer and a supporter of local businesses. And somehow when I see about 15 Amazons for gloves or toothbrushes, whatever, that, a lot of that stuff is available right here. And, and if we don't look after these guys up and down our Main Street and girls, we're in trouble. So. Uh, we have new staff, we have new pro processes, but I think it's something we have to visit again with our team and say, hey, we owe these guys. That's why we sit in this nice building, our taxpayers. So I think Amazon should be, I don't know, a cow discussion or whatever, but it's something that concerns me a lot also. Thank you. No. Are we allowed a second shot at no. it? Once everybody no. Once everybody No, once I give you one chance, that's it. <laughs> But I'm sure that there'll be more discussion about that at some point in time. I mean, the administration has notated it, and uh, I'll have some talk with them as well. So, Councilor Powell. I believe I used my time up earlier. <laughs> you can repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't admit to it. Um, no. I wasn't pointing any fingers. <laughs> um, no, I think I, I, yeah, as I said before, uh, the Stamp Peters um, are having a huge um, hockey's for everyone. Tomorrow night. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's about it. So. Okay, perfect. Councillor Bobbick. Yeah, just uh, with the nice weather we've been having, we've also occurred a lot of ice around town. I'm just wondering if there's been any thought to, there's certain sidewalks and stuff, and it was addressed today by a, a rate pair. There's a, I guess, a shortcut, he called it, between the bay to go to the school. The kids walk on it's icy and they're slipping or falling. About using the trackless to go around and it is capable of spreading salt on something that I think we should. I can bring that up to the floor. Yeah, yeah just that we can do it now before it gets too cold and we'll never do it. Right, so I'll okay. try to give it a shot, it'll be really good. Uh, speaking of the rink, I was spent most of the weekend there. It was uh, nice to see a lot of people there. It's a, it's a really active place, like it's something to see. Depressing. But at the same time, I'm watching a hockey game and the alarm goes off. Nobody moved. Including me, the hockey game didn't start, or didn't even stop. These were under 11. I just kind of find it surprising if the place was burning, why nobody moved. Like, I mean, I think there needs to be some protocol brought in place there. So. I'm sure that uh, the director, Clausen, will take uh, that back too. So, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> and we know it's your fault. It was not my fault. It had nothing to do with cooking, okay? Let's just clarify. Can I comment on that a little sure, bit? Sure, go ahead. Uh, so we resolved what the fire alarm was. It was uh, a fan in the concession. We've replaced the belt. Shouldn't happen again. But I have been working with Fire Chief at Orchuk on changing some, the way like the alarm gets alerted um, because the response was somewhat delayed and there could have been some improvement there. So we have a record of the call log from the security thing and we've been working and we're going to change so that when the alarm triggers, fire gets dispatched immediately rather than things going to phones first because oh. that caused a bit of a delay had there been a real fire. Um, and I did hear that the hockey game didn't stop. So I'm not sure what to do there, but I yeah. did. Yeah, we've been talking about it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and, and I guess to comment on that, I guess the, the fans are fans are really dedicated <laughs> fans who are going to burn and watch the game. But I mean, at the same time, I don't know how you'd speak to the referees or something like that. But I guess 
Education. Education. Yeah. So, yeah. You exit the building. Okay, thanks for bringing that up. Anything further? No, that's it. Deputy Mayor Morial. Um, yeah, so uh, as we all know, next week uh, we'll be all in Brandon along with our other uh, municipal councillors across the province. Um, so I'm looking forward to the uh, administrative uh, speakers and the sessions and that going on along with the networking that will going on um, to collaborate with other councillors and municipalities on like issues. And then reading uh, some of the topics that was uh, uh, presented today in the new government's throne speech, I was very disappointed uh, to uh, not see any mention um, to any plan or uh, initiative to tackle crime in their throne speech. So that's something that I would uh, like our council um, to bring up with the Minister of Justice or the Premier when we uh, seek them out uh, next week. And then that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Um, see you, Paul. Uh, I just I want council to know that that I encourage my managers to buy local all the time. So it's when I say I'm, I haven't banned it, they're listening. I I believe I said yet, but we haven't banned it yet, and they listen to that. But it 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 does go that they are on a shoestring budget. We don't have very loose budgets. And when they when they see savings, they go for them. So it's it's not intentional. It isn't. It is to keep the budgets tight. But we will absolutely be looking at options to try and get rid of the Amazon or the out of town purchases as much as we can. Yes, we will do that. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, no, sir. <clears throat> Director Clausen. Nothing for me. I was going to bring up the fire alarm, so. Okay. Chief Fedorchuk. I have nothing. Okay. CFO Ganita. I, I did uh, find a couple of letters that mention the uh, newspaper and kind advertising program, so I'll forward that on to council, but uh, there's nothing that shows. Uh, running balance. Okay. Um, Ms. Campama. Um, I don't have anything to add, but I was wondering, because before we did talk briefly about um, some meetings with uh, the SPSD School Division, and I was wondering if um, I could be more uh, involved in that and like um, seeing those kinds of meetings with the school and stuff like that because I feel like that's where um, I guess my voice could be the most value, value. like you'll have all the, uh, you know, the adults and then you'll have somebody who actually attends the school and understands um, how the students feel so would that be possible in any way? Yeah we could talk about that afterwards but absolutely we can, we can do whatever we can to have you more involved. All right. Thank you. Good, thank you for doing that. And for me, uh, <clears throat> I guess the foundation last weekend, they did an awesome job. Uh, I don't know where the, the, the fundraise went, but, but definitely to, uh, to bring out the, the foundation, which is a very important piece of our community. I don't know the, exactly the number of dollars that they have uh, you know, uh, spread out in the valley, but it's, it's substantial. And, uh, and when they talk about the age of the foundation, I can't remember exactly what the uh, Mr. Emmerker was saying, or I can't remember, but anyways, they said the age of the foundation and how much and what they have accomplished in that short period of time compared to some of the older ones that have been around since I think the late 60s, our foundation in the Valley has done strides. They've done, they've made some huge accomplishments. So hats off to our, our Swan Valley Foundation. This weekend, Valley stage players will head out on the stage and and uh, present to the community as well. So get out there and, and enjoy that. We talked a little bit about the the sidewalks and the streets and all that. You know, I know they're icy and some areas are pretty bad, but uh, yeah, some of our sidewalks too. We got to kind of look at that because we do have the ability to do some sanding there. So we should pay some attention to that because I don't think after today, I think we're going to be into a cold spell and. 
and that ice is going to stay there probably, I'm guessing, probably till springtime. Yes, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, I was disappointed with the fact is that with the throne speech today, and there's no mention of attacking crime. In fact, I'm so disappointed that even during the election, that that was not even uh, a big thing that uh, of discussion. So definitely, um, I'll be bringing my voice to the AMM and, and everywhere else that we possibly can because this is a big problem and, and, and our governments need to know that this is, a, this is an issue and it's eroding our communities in a big way. Next week, we mentioned about the AMM and it's the 25th anniversary of the AMM. So it's gonna be a special AMM for us all. So I hope that you all enjoy your time there and, and learn what you can. There's gonna be some great presenters and, uh, and we'll be hearing from the new government as well. And, and the bear pit session, uh, that you'll have your opportunity to speak to any of the ministers and hopefully we do get some of our own uh, sessions with the, the, the ministers that we have uh, asked to speak to. So other than that, uh, that's it. Not really. <clears throat> Re resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.31 p.m. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.